what is what is the importance in uh, in, in in people getting together on a regular basis or an occasional basis? Oh, I I, I think it's healthy for our souls to uh, open up a little bit mm-hmm. and not be so self contained. Um, I think the power of friendship is it means a lot. What would we learn? What do we learn? No, nobody barbecued or cooked. I know that's kind of lunch. a bummer. I think I think we sh- in hindsight that was one of the things we could have improved upon. We could have either had a I you there know. Any food trucks. That's what I was told, but that shit fell through. Yeah. Mm. So what people do? They went to fucking the closest taco joint. Okay. Well, oh. next time barbecues. Something. Well, a, a warm. Oh, maybe by the beach. I'm, that's cool too. Yeah, I'm with it. Yeah, for sure. Maybe we play sports, volleyball. Volley, on, buddy. <laughs> volley, like in <laughs> yeah. Did did you guys ever see that uh, that Maverick movie? I didn't see it. I saw it twice. It was so oh, good. God. It was good. <laughs> yeah. You liked it? Yeah, I liked it. Did you see it? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's fucking off the hook. Okay. I saw it in the it. rumble seats where the seats shake. Oh nice. And they move as a plane moves. It's mm-hmm. like tush. And it's pretty sick. Like the the thing lands and the whole sheet goes, <laughs> and starts shaking and shit. I I brought a weed, like a weed pen in there with me, uh-huh. and I was like smoking in my sweatshirt. Yeah. And I I just got like so stoned, and I felt like the universe was speaking to me through the movie. That's good. I like that. Were you a fan of the first Top Gun? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but this one blew that one out the water. I think, you know. Uh, yeah, I think he was. I think the 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 movie it was uh, just as much a, a sequel to Top Gun as it is uh, just a sort of commentary on on Tom Cruise, you know, like him sort of saying something to his, his peers or, or you know his profession. You what know? do you mean? Like it's like his his calling card to the industry? Yeah, like I don't think he I don't think he ever really has won any awards or anything for being Tom Cruise. You don't think so? And I think he was kind of, and he's done a lot of really, you know, people give Tom Cruise a lot of shit, but I. He's fucking weird. I think, but I think he's done a lot of, (laughs) I think he's done a lot of good movies. He's done a lot of really Uh, shit. He's he's one of those actors that like, I think they hit a point and then they just got too fucking weird for me to like accept anything they do. He's done a lot of good, he's done a lot of bad movies, but he's done a lot of, like, think of, think of. Days of Thunder. You see, I didn't care about Days of Thunder, but I liked, I like Rain Man. Give that another vision. What about Legend? I like Legend. Um, I like Far and Away, you know, the one where he plays like an immigrant with Nicole Kidman. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a great, excellent movie. Is it Eyes Wide Shut? That's him too? Eyes Wide Shut. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. You know, like. That one's pretty good. Yeah. Like, I don't care about any of that Mission Impossible stuff. How about Risky Business? A risky Business, of course. Yeah, risky Business is amazing. And the yeah, soundtrack on Risky Business. But there's like an innocence to him back then that like his newer shit is just like, I'm like, you're like a robot or something. I didn't really know. Yeah, he got very weird. He does all his own stunts. Yeah, but a lot of those got like like Eddie Murphy's not cool anymore. Like all those a lot of those eighties guys just like get to a, like a certain point and they like lose their shit. There's too much I think they get they see they see too much. It's too much excess, right? Like they're just oh. like you're basically treated like the closest thing we have to a god, you know? Sure. And uh and yeah, I don't think that's worship. healthy. No, I think yeah. it fucks you up badly. They all get fucked up. And the adrenochrome. I'm sure that's like, adrenochrome has, is fucked has, up. Has yeah. some side effects to it. Mm. Makes you weirder. I heard a story about Eddie Murphy like when he's on set, this is what I heard from someone that was on some movie that um, he has a stand-in the whole time, and then he comes out of his trailer. No one, no one can look at him. He comes out of his trailer. He stands in front of the camera, and he does his line once, and he goes back in his trailer. Shut the fuck up. That's what I heard. And the whole, every, the whole other time, there's just perfect stand-ins that look just like him and talk for him. All right, whenever you're ready, when the camera's up, okay. Once yeah, but when was the last time he made a good movie? Bowfinger, probably. It's probably the last good one. What year was that? Bowfinger is probably late nineties, right? No, oh, fuck, that's not a good movie. Oh, you didn't like that? What? No, dude. The one with fucking no. No. Um No, not the recent one. Not you people. Oh, which one? Uh it was like the black exploitation director. Oh, uh was it like Black Dynamite or something like that? Similar. Similar vibe. It was on Netflix. Dolomite is my name. Dolomite is my name. He played Dolomite? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. 
Don't mind is my name. Sorry. I, I heard that one was not good. It, was it good? I don't know. I liked it. I didn't think it didn't like stick out to me as like the greatest movie of the year or even in the top like five of the year. But but did I anyone it. see Coming to America Part Two? Yeah, it was fucking terrible. That was maybe one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my I life. I didn't see that. Yeah, it made me so upset because I I had, I fucking adored the first one, but that second one is just like it's so frustrating. I'm like this is not funny. There's nothing good in this whole fucking thing. No, it's like somebody showing up to paint that hasn't painted a piece in thirty years trying Ooh, to paint a piece. Oh, shots fired! Is that, are you talking? Shots about? fired! No, that's why, no, that's why I didn't paint. That's why Alex is like, I, Brian is going to judge me. Yeah, I don't. No, judge no. I, I mean, but it's like that. It's like when someone is just sort of out of touch. Mm-hmm. Trying to sort of recapture their their emotions of of, of a previous tough, those, those uh, uh, get concoction. Soft. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, maybe it's not that time to uh, to be creative. Yeah, you know, if if you don't feel it, what's what you can't it's going it, to show? Right? Yeah. Well, it's just going to show what it is. Is going to sure. be what 100%. it is. I mean, yeah, people just keep going without thinking why they're doing things they just keep doing it especially if you're getting paid for it you just can't stop right just yeah. keep going and they going and going the check. right they can't turn down the check and it's a, it's a monster because not only like they get all this money and then they they make their lifestyle reflect all the money and then they have to keep feeding that monster instead of like living below their means a little bit and not having to answer to anything or anybody uh-huh. i think it's that's the american way right yeah the more as soon as we get our money we max out everything around us to spend all that money and uh, because we want to have all the stuff that we're supposed to buy, because that's what we're we're just buying machines, you know. Yeah, we're well, consumers. Well, what happens when we get what we want? What do you, what do you do then? You enjoy it, but then what? Hopefully, yeah, you want something else. It depends what you want. Yeah, well, what that's do, what the goal is. What do you want, Ryan? What do I want? I think that when we when we have success, that uh, that we we just want to get away and have a little piece of paradise, and. Um, get away from stress and indulge in our desires. Indulge in your desires. Indulge in our desires, whatever they may be. What what are your what kind of desires do you want to indulge in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let's get into that. Well like well for me I would enjoy I would enjoy living on a large open property. Yeah. Uh, same with uh with a lot of possibilities. Thank you, GK. My G. Hi to everybody here. Hey, say hi on the camera. Later, everybody. Love you. All right. Talk to you guys. All right. <laughs> mm. Wow. So, yeah, we're, we're, welcome to the show, everyone. This is the Powerful Truth Angels. We're sitting in with Rhyme. Welcome and what we're talking me. about is, this is Rhyme 1 from MSK. And what we're talking about here is... Um, and an NAWR. And NAWR also, it's just for those that don't know. No. And uh, we're talking about what his... I like talking about this too. What is my... What do you, what do you really want? Pe- people want different things. Some people are like, I need, a, I need $10 million. I want to have a nice car. I want to be the man. I want to do... Like, I don't want that. Mm-hmm. I need the things that money will buy. If I could get the things that money will buy me, I wouldn't need the money, but I need the money to get it. You would like to be out on a property. Keep keep talking about that, that whole... Well, and... and- <laughs> I think that we, uh, having open spirits, um, we, I think that we become very excited about having, exp- I'm, I'm excited about having experiences. Sure. Uh, and to uh, finance those experiences with something that I'm passionate about. Uh, and being able to, when I desire, retreat away and being away from any type of influences that may hinder um, my enthusiasm for being alive. What kind, what kind of influences hinder your enthusiasm for being alive? Uh, swimming in the, <laughs> in the pool of personalities uh, um, that we call cities, like this city here or any of these cities, or having to mix with people or do things that we don't enjoy. I think that we like, we like it, though. Yeah. You know, I, I think so. I've I've been I, I I was living in France. I saw that I was living in France. You had a and, duck. 
I had three ducks. You had three ducks. I had three ducks, and um, there were other animals that roamed the property freely. Yeah. Uh, I was away from people. Yeah. And uh, I was gardening and whatever. Fuck. I didn't know. I, I looked up on YouTube, and uh, I had a house with more space than I needed. Just you? It was just me by myself. For three months? Yeah. No. I was there for two and a half years. <laughs> what? Yeah. I was there for two and a half years, and uh, I was in Paris. I was in Paris uh, part. Uh, I was living in New York City, in, and in the summer of 2019, I moved over to Paris okay. to start building a show, a, a large-scale show of, uh, of paintings and whatnot. And so you had a residency. They put you up. They put me up, and I had a studio in Paris, and I was living in Paris in a, in a one-bedroom apartment. And uh, th within a few months, uh, COVID started to break down, uh, happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was just coming back from Egypt. Yeah. And um, and yeah, and everything just closed down in, in a city that uh, is, uh, <laughs> in, a, in a city that uh, is very dependent on culture. <laughs> Yeah, a city dependent on culture, and um, when all those things are closed down, uh, uh, interacting uh, 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 venues and whatnot uh, all shut down. It just became like a ghost town. Became like that I am legend, yeah, kind of thing with Will Smith. Right, you you're know, in like, a foreign country. Yeah, I'm in a foreign. You're country. there to work on a show, and I'm COVID there. hits. Yeah, and I also didn't want to drink alcohol, and I also didn't want to be around people chain smoking cigarettes. Right, and I didn't want to hang out with a lot of graffiti guys, and I just wanted to sit in my studio and focus on on paintings that I had no plan for. Right, all improvised works. Right. right. Um, so how did you end up, like, let me ask you this. When COVID hits and you're in a one-room apartment in France working on a show, right? Yeah. What do, what do you, what's going through your head when that hits, when that happens? Well, uh, the, my apartment, previous to me moving into it, it must have been an Airbnb. It was very generic. Yeah. Uh, there were, uh, like, pictures of the Eiffel Tower and, and, and <laughs> Ikea furniture. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and there was not much to it, and it was like a five-floor walk-up. Right. Uh, so I didn't want to put much of my personal items in there. My motivation was to have a successful show and move to the countryside and garden and have a family. Right. And uh, when COVID hit and they were telling everybody to stay at home, my apartment you know, was the decor of an Airbnb. Right. Uh, all of my stuff was in the studio. So I was still on the streets walking and going to the studio despite not having permission or anything like that. Right. And I would paint the streets. I would I'd go do graffiti by myself for enjoyment and I would sit in the studio and paint. Uh, this is before you went to the farmhouse. Yeah, it was after it, it was after the second lockdown, going into the third lockdown that uh, I said, oh, I can't, I can't sit through another lockdown in, in Paris again. And I moved to the countryside. And I moved to the countryside to sort of test out, you know, uh, if, w what, what do I want? You know, what were we saying earlier about, uh, yeah. you know, if I, if, if, what, what, it, what is it ultimately that I want? And ultimately yeah. what I want, if it's a place to retreat to yeah. uh, and, and, and garden and have, fun animals and, and, and a nice little experience, nice yeah. life. Yeah. Um, I went and had that, but I was alone. Uh, how did that, how did you get that set up? Was it, was it the gallery? It's uh, through my, my, uh, my gallerist, Claude. And he's uh, like, I'm going to put you up in this townhouse. Yeah. His, his, uh, his nephew uh, bought the house next, his, ne his nephew lived in the countryside and bought, um, uh, <laughs> the house next door to him okay and it was vacant and he was fixing it up uh, had a big backyard and all that kind of stuff and i moved into that so i took my overhead from paris and moved it to the countryside and when i was there I, it was it was great it was a lovely town um it was where like claude monet the painter is from mm -hmm. uh it's a uh, vernon giverny it's mm -hmm. about 
an hour train ride outside of Paris and Normandy. Okay. Um, yeah, and I was there, and it was cool. Uh, but then I kind of realized that, like, the things that entertained me were not – I realized how – dysfunctional i was uh being out of my environment right not hanging out with american people to reinforce what's acceptable or not right uh some of the the ways that we are here uh might be a bit abrasive uh in 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 this different environment might you know they tend to be a little more laid back or have different cultural so you had a bit norms. of a culture clash like you uh, yeah and and i yeah i just i didn't i wasn't good at speaking a language i took French for a year, but I could just navigate a menu or, right. or, or a subway or something like that. Right. Um, but being there, uh, I just had to spend a lot of time alone and it, it led me to do a ton of purging of, of my, myself, right. my, my, my identity. Um, I missed being around Americans that can understand, um, uh, the humor that we have uh, mm -hmm. by this uh, being our, our first language and 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 some of the the, the, the subtleties that come from uh, speaking to someone who's you know from the same background as you yeah so you're in this townhouse you got some ducks you're gardening and you're painting you're in there for two years well, I mean, altogether, I was in France for two and a half years. Right. So I was there through most of COVID. That's amazing. When I when I I didn't I didn't uh, want to get one of those. Uh, I didn't want to get the what is it the 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 coronavirus uh, uh, vaccine. Yeah. I didn't want to get that. Yeah. Uh, so I went through all these efforts to to get paperwork to to curb to curve me getting that yeah 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 and um yeah and then i try to find a way to get back into the united states without them noticing i overstayed my visa right but they caught me they caught you yeah and uh they caught me trying to enter and they gave me a two-year ban on going out of, out of the country yeah and my i left my my you know my house there with all my belongings and the ducks and everything like that and and I, I, I could not return. Wow. And I had told myself that if, if this happened, that I did not want to live in New York. I, right. I, I, I'm from New York City, but I, I do not want to live in New York City anymore. Right. Uh, and I said that if I ended up in a situation that I would travel. And that's what I did is I traveled. Uh, we ended up getting an RV and traveling across America. Wait, before, the whole, let me ask something. Before you get to, before you get to the RV, which is also very interesting, I mean, you're on that property by yourself. Are you getting? Are you just talking here? I mean, what, are you? Do you have <laughs> Am visitors? I talking to myself? Yeah, are you talking, I mean, I talk, yeah. I talk to myself on a daily basis. Like, you know. Well, I I think that when it comes to when it comes to this whole COVID experience, um, it's difficult. You know, I, I think for for many of us, we've had to take a time out and sit with ourselves. Right. And for some people, it might have drove them deeper into whatever kind of issues that they battle with. Yeah. Uh, and for some people, maybe they, that also happened to them, but then they found some things there. That I, I've learned to really appreciate some of the difficulty that I've had in, in, in that experience. And, and um, yeah, I've learned to appreciate all of it. I, I spent a lot of time alone. I got good at, I, I learned how to like meditate my mind Yeah. by getting out of, does that matter? I mean, not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> uh, COVID for me was, was a time where I was going to France to work, to make paintings. And it very much is an uphill venture trying to push a, a an art career, a, a passion. Right. Um, into the the attention and desires of of the public yeah it's just because just because you you're enthusiastic about what you do it doesn't mean that people are going to get behind it or right or it's the right time or what's going on in art world or who yeah. you're connected with what gal you know it's a whole thing I mean, it's, it's a like, whole it's a whole thing you can be you can be the most amazing artist uh, to you and your peers but just might not be the time or you might not be the right personality who knows you know? yeah and 
So I went out. I went out to France. I I, I had done four solo shows in France. Yeah. Before going out this this time during COVID, and I was going on to do my fifth show, and I realized like like so like with graffiti, sometimes graffiti can become very obsessive. Uh, and sometimes when people are pursuing a career or a family or a this or a that, they might stop writing graffiti or, or it becomes a, something that's kind of really far in the backseat. Yeah. Uh, when I went to do this show, I, I had intentions on just sitting down in the studio, not socializing and painting the best work I could possibly paint. Right. So I went there to sort of be with myself and be alone. Sure. Uh, I was not in a relationship. Uh, I was just there to paint. Right. And uh, and then in a few months into being that, COVID happened. Yeah. And then there was lockdowns and then there was no option right. to socialize if I wanted to socialize. Right. And then, as I said, after a few lockdowns in Paris, just sort of wandering the streets. Oh, and I got, I got into gardening. I, I, I couldn't live in an Airbnb esque apartment anymore. So I started having plants and, and taking clippings from parks and, and propagating them or, or, or doing. I started growing like fruits and vegetables in, in my windows. Oh, no. That's and, nice. uh, and then I just ended up in the countryside, yeah. doing it a little bit more elaborate and sitting there. And I, I learned how to meditate. I learned how to uh, 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 channel creative energy into uh, paintings or in, uh, with creative writing. Um, I, I had more activities that exercised my intuition. Um, yeah. And then I and then I kind of went a little little. It, you know, it, it, it makes you stir crazy a bit. That's what I was thinking. After a while, it's going to make you nuts. Yeah, after a while, you know, like... like You, you need people. You, your social interaction, like the, the kind of social interaction that, that feeds your, 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 your desires. Yeah. Uh, for me, it, it was all happening through a screen. I would have to, to engage with people, whether they be right. friends or family. Right. I would have to stare at it like a, like a LCD screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that and that gets a little played out after a while. Yeah, yeah, that's tough. No. You know, and and that and that and that's why I sat under I sat under a uh, a cedar tree in France holding my duck, went into a meditation, and sort of weighed out all the possibilities of me trying to enter into the United States, um, and just said to myself that I would not settle in any one place, that I would travel, and and again that's what I did. Uh, originally I was just going to get like a, like a hoopty from one of my brothers or something like that and just go around doing like, kind of like a graffiti road trip or yeah. something with my buddies yeah. and hanging out with my friends again and all that kind of stuff. Then it graduated to a van. I started, I told Casey, uh, Eclipse about it and he, uh, said we should get a Sprinter van and then, uh, I was watching, uh, Anchorman Part Two, yeah, and uh, when Ron Burgundy gets the news team back together, yeah, and they have to go to New York for the CNN equivalent, uh, you know, job, uh, they drive cross country in an RV, yeah, and I said that's what I want to do. That's what I want to do with my friends and family. I want to drive cross country in an RV. Shit, that's dope. And I never been in an RV before. Before I bought this thing, I, you know, never, never. Never been in one, never drove one. So wait, is that your house now? Me, my house? I don't know. It, it, like I've, ha I've had to do a lot of contemplating on what home is. Uh, well, you know, do you uh, live in it or do you have another, do you have an apartment? I live everywhere. Right. I live wherever I am. But you don't, you don't have like a space that you pay rent on. Mm, well, I guess I pay rent on the, the RV. Right. I pay That's rent cool. on the RV. I, I, I traveled. I mean, I traveled from... Uh, July all the way up until the end of December, I I got back to my family's wow. for Christmas. That's awesome. So we're talking like almost six months That's of cool. just traveling, staying in Airbnb, the whole country, just staying in it. like when I'm not living in the RV or uh, I'm in a hotel or I'm in a 
in an Airbnb or I'm visiting and staying with friends or family or something like that. Right. Uh, and you're with Dax a lot of that time? We Dax, uh, for the road, the roadmap tour, we called it the roadmap tour. And our objective was to drive across America, um, interacting with people in local, in local, like local people in cities and uh, painting graffiti, doing uh, um, shows or art workshops and um, going to places uh, in, in nature and making paintings. Like these old painters, these, these old masters, they would uh, paint outside. I, I was tired of, of painting indoors. Right. Uh, one of the things that makes me, one of the, the, the parts of graffiti that make, makes me want to do it is it's just a wonderful excuse to be outside. True. You know, and, and I said, well, I'd like to make these paintings outside. And that's what I was doing in the countryside in France is mm. making paintings outside with my duck. And- um, Did you name your duck? EC. Easy. It means here in French. Ah. Um, so I drove across America and we were going to places. We went to the Grand Canyon. We made paintings at the cliff's edge at the Grand Canyon. Uh, I went to Dealey Plaza where John F. Kennedy was assassinated. Uh, and I stood on by the grassy knoll and made grassy a painting knoll. there. Okay. Um, Galveston, Texas on a, on a boardwalk. Um, in uh, New Orleans in the French Quarter, I made a painting there, uh, different state parks and all that kind of stuff. So I made a whole body of work going across America. Uh, instead of spending two years creating one painting, uh, I was spending about two hours on average to oh. uh, start and complete paintings. Oh, wow. Um, and that's what, kind of what I'm gonna do again. I'm, when I get back to, uh, to New York, uh, I have uh, another RV waiting that I'm going to configure and uh, I'm probably going to start heading south from New York, uh, get down to Florida and then stop bopping my way around the United States as long as I please. Um, in December, so right now we're in uh, March. We're in March? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right now we're in March and uh, in December of this year, my two year ban will be complete and I can then return to Europe. So I've made it two years with just sort of traveling and, and wandering around. Do you think you'll get to go back to the farmhouse? I'm gonna have to go back there to get my stuff, yeah. my belongings and, right. and repair some of the, you know, the relationships that I've had there. And, right. and um, yeah, I'd like, to, I'd like to live a, a little further south and so that it's friendly for gardening and um i'd like to garden i'd like to have animals that hang out with me yeah and i'd like to um create an environment that's desirable desirable for people to visit yeah and do kind of like uh retreats or workshops so that's the dream that's the dream of like what what you want like you blank check you know that's what you would that's what you use it for i want to hang i want to create vibe i want to create a positive vibe yeah that i would like enough to live in yeah. or engage yeah. in, uh, and then have the possibility to invite people out to have experiences in these environments. Yeah, that, that's I, it. I, 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 I would like a, I would like a big property somewhere in LA or LA adjacent. This is like also I have no idea if I'll ever get this, but and on that property I do a sketch. You know, there would be a barn, which would be basically like a like a studio like a big raw space. So I could do like anything from work out, paint, make films, whatever, just all this space, right? A building for creativity. Building for creativity. And then there would be a barn and then there would be also like, you know, I'd have a sauna, an ice bath and all that shit. Uh, probably outside of the barn, there'd be a pool and there would be a main house and it would be a very nice, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the what the architecture would be, but I have an idea, and uh, you know, and I see this is this big sprawling space with lots of trees, animals of all sorts. I like the idea of having, you know, I saw this thing on Instagram where someone raised six species of animal together at the same time, mm -hmm. and so none of them knew what each other was. They all thought they were the same thing. You know, it's like a duck, a cat, a dog, it's, and they're just cruising around. I was like, that's so fucking cool. Mm -hmm. Love to have that, but. Um, 
that's my that's my pie in the sky dream and of course also like included with that would be like a family a wife uh kids maybe Mm -hmm. extended family friends Mm -hmm. community all that stuff because everything else i think is probably bullshit you know and i I think everything else is is crap uh Mm -hmm. and uh i spend all this time trying to figure out how to get things done and move forward in my life and it doesn't matter all that shit is whatever if you don't know what the fuck you're doing it for but it's all abstract now because i don't have any of that i don't have any any of those things i don't have a duck i don't have a wife i don't have a pool uh and i don't have a barn and i don't have it doesn't have to be i don't have to have those things to be complete but we're talking dreams here right right jason we're talking big time dreams you got any big time dreams jason what is it what is your biggest blank check dream my biggest blank check dream <clears throat> i mean owning any property would be great uh as a millennial here you know they say we're not going to get any so I think that's about the most I can aspire to is uh, some kind of pro- reasonably sized property with, and I would say I would like uh, something with significant like woodland or fields or even a desert, any sort of acre or plus natural setting because I grew up surrounded by a forest. So that's what I'm used to. And the longer you spend in a city, I think it's the more that you, you, you get, yearn you for You get that. some desert up in Joshua Tree or... Yeah, palms or any of those places, mm-hmm. right? You can still get a chunk sure. of land for cheap. It's possible. Yeah, put a little modular home on it, you know? Get some Wi-Fi, you're cooking. The problem is, the biggest problem is people. Where are the people? Where's your interactions? Because you're going to be by yourself. Yeah, well. And you become a desert person. Well, that's and why you got to form those relationships. You got to form those relationships. Well, you got to yeah. get some people to join you. Start and, gaming. And you got to have a Start cool gaming. enough environment that people want to visit you. Yeah, and you got to be somebody that people want to visit. Yeah. No. You gotta know how to cook. You gotta know how to entertain. You gotta be good at conversation. You gotta also have, uh, you gotta be a little laid back and you gotta know when to apply the pressure. And you can't, you can't fart too much. Yeah, I'll have a foosball table. No, 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 no foosball. We don't wanna do that. Bad. Foosball is highly overrated in my opinion. I hate that game. A bumper pool? Maybe. Foosball is just like a, it's just chaotic, you know? I think it's pretty cool. Have you seen anyone who's good at I'd rather, foosball? I'd rather play air tangent. hockey than foosball, personally. What do you think? I agree with that. I like the game Trouble. The board game? The board game Trouble. How does that work? It's fun. I don't know. I, I never I, played Trouble. I played Trouble with my father the other, uh, couple of weeks ago. Yeah? You, you hit you hit the dice in the Oh, middle. yeah. It's Wait, like yeah. Boggle. Uh, it's like uh, uh, Parcheesi, isn't it? It's like a... Well, it's no, gotta, there's a piece and you pop it, right? You pop it and then you got to go around the board. That stuff oh, yeah. is very cool. Yeah, that's very cool. I don't the, know. The popping thing. I don't is cool love board me. games, but I do like. I do. I will play cards. Or I will play Pictionary. Mm. Pictionary is fun to me. Poker is fun. I love hardcore board games. You're a hardcore board. You like Monopoly Go and shit like that. <laughs> yeah, Monopoly Go. I don't know. Uh, Clue Dungeons and Dragons edition. Yeah. Well, for me, painting is is kind of like playing a game. Right, but you can't do that with someone else, can you? Sure, you can. I mean, but you don't. No, I mean, it, that if I was with someone that painted or enjoyed right. painting, or was, would you would you want to have a partner that was a, as equally a good a painter as you, and you could paint with them together? Sure, I, I would find that fun. Like a whole Dabs and Mila situation. I think that it 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 all depends on how how you you wouldn't I wouldn't know until I until I was in it, but I, I have never had some dabs in my situation like that neither have i i can't imagine but it looks interesting because i think that they they'll do it. one person does one thing another person does the other thing this person does a letter this person does a character and they make art like that it's pretty interesting if you well think how about it. yeah how, how close do you want your partner into your passion you know uh, probably not probably needs i probably might need some space yeah but I, again i don't know maybe not who knows i don't know what the fuck i need there, at there all. are some people that work together yeah you know and, and then they go home together yeah, and they and they troubleshoot and they problem solve. Yeah, uh, for work and pleasure. Yeah. When when is when do you have alone time in that situation? Not too much. Not too maybe much. you're just like the same person. And also, I like if you work that much and you and you live together and you work together, it's like, are you even going to screw anymore? Probably not, because it's hard to screw in any relationship after a few years. Well, maybe you live in the barn in your in your dream house. Oh yeah, separate it, church and state. Yeah, I'm gonna be in the barn for two weeks, so you miss me. That's actually a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that because you know, if someone leaves, you miss them. It's true. You know, you miss them. Do you? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I like I like the the purpose of me traveling is to uh, is to go experience something else. Yeah. 
you know, I'd have to go a pretty long time to, to miss people, I think. A friend of mine is doing a thing where he goes from, uh, he's traveling in Ireland mm -hmm. and he's just taking hiking trails. 20 mile, 20 mile hikes. And at the beginning of the hike and the end of the hike, there's like a pack or some food or some shit. Mm -hmm. It's all preordained. Yeah. He's, just going, he's going by himself. And I was like, God damn, that's a good idea. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I need to, maybe I need to declutter all this shit, you know, go somewhere by myself for a couple of weeks, walk around, let, let my food, you know, imagine like, he doesn't have to think about it. He's like, here's a, here's a place to stay. Here's a shepherd's pie. And here's your water for your bag and go fucking wander in the woods of Ireland. Mm -hmm. That sounds fucking sick for me. No, yeah. but I think it's the thing that, you, it's harder to do, uh, I guess, I don't know. Maybe it isn't hard to do. Maybe I'm stuck in my ways. I, I feel like I have so many obligations. Can I just go do that? I can, sure, I can do whatever sure I want. You can. Sure, you I just could. have to find a way to make money on a road. Well, you can't make money in the woods, in the forest. How do you do that? You guys no Wi-Fi. When you get to one of those places where they give the hikers like a free sandwich or a place to stay, <laughs> maybe they got some Wi-Fi. You just, make a, you just start banging out some deals real quick. Find yeah. some truffles. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Whittle. Just whittle on the, on the yeah, road. You just be whittling stuff and yeah. selling it on your, your Etsy or whatever, yeah, you know. Yeah. Right. It's this wooden kazoo I made in the, out of the <laughs> Irish wood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People love all that kind of stuff. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I, I mean, why not? I, I had a I had a, a dream where if I had enough money or, or time or, or, or possibility that I wanted to see if it was possible to walk across America. Oh, wow. You know, or or even on that Appalachian Trail. Oh, yeah. That, you know, the one, yep. that one, or any of these kind of things. But I, I, I would want to do not a trail. I just would want to walk. Through all the neighborhoods a, of America? I just want to walk across America. My goal is to, if I'm in New York, to go west. How long do you think it would take you? A, a fucking long time. Like a year? Yeah. So, like, in school, in school, in school, like, uh, when they would talk about, like, in history class or something like that. They would talk about like uh, they would talk about armies, you know, marching across uh, uh, countries, yeah, or, mar or, or uh, uh, marching across states, yeah. for weeks. And I said, "Oh, that, that seems like that'd be pretty fucking enjoyable. I wouldn't mind. <laughs> I wouldn't mind doing that. You know, like that'd be fucking awesome. You know." Uh, so yeah, I I just kind of make it like I would love to make a project where. Because people have rode their bikes cross country, yeah, they've rode their vehicles cross country. They've yeah. gone in trains. They've they've done it this way. That uh, just walk. I would just like to walk across America. You gotta have some good shoes. Well, yeah. you, get, you just keep getting shoes. Yeah, you just keep. There's a Foot Locker everywhere. You just stop and get some new Hocus. That's true. Yeah, or maybe or maybe it's it's a cause. Maybe you get um, sponsored. Yeah. Maybe you get sponsored. It's a cause. Yeah. You know that with now in the in the world that we live in now, uh, we can interact on a daily basis mm. with people that we never meet, and and maybe people might want to vicariously experience that. You know, through I admire it. You know, choices. I, I, I've always, I've never done the drive across America. I've always wanted to do it. I think I need to do it still mm -hmm. before I get too old. You know, right. well, how, how come you didn't do it? I think when I was younger, I was scared of going to really hick towns. I thought, I thought that I don't know because I, I grew up in the city my whole life. Like, mm -hmm. I was scared of going into like fucking rural Alabama. I was like, I'm gonna get fucking fucked up by some hicks that was that was always going through my head for some reason mm. um but now now i realize I, you know i drove to arizona and covid with my ex and we like went to like a, a reservation stayed in a fucking yurt and that was awesome i loved mm -hmm. it i loved it i love driving there i love driving back i like driving now i i just like to drive because i'm i'm in the city so much i'm doing the same thing all the time i have my little fucking rat route you know i go here i go there i go here go go there go there you know that's what i do all the time every week fucking day after day year after year and i just like to drive and know that i'm leaving la and mm -hmm. i don't give a fuck where i'm going i'm just mm -hmm. gonna, i'm just gonna drive mm -hmm. and um i just need to fucking make a i need to make a i need to do it but I, I think i have so many responsibilities that i weigh myself not not that they're weighing me down but i choose to weigh myself down with a lot of things because i feel like i need to keep i don't know why it's just kind of what i've done but i think sometimes i feel like you know if i had the means if i was independently wealthy i'd just say fuck everything i'm gonna put a pause on life and i'm just gonna go wander around Mm -hmm. but i don't i don't want to i just i don't know i'm where i'm scared that i won't be provided for if i if i if i leave uh 
you know, I'm scared that I won't, uh, I don't know. I'm just, I, I feel like I need to have some sort of structure and something to lean on, you know? Well, you could always get divorced and you could always file for bankruptcy. Yeah. In your in your dream, you know, is about like owning a house and, and getting married and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, maybe. You could always marry your girlfriend. Yeah. You could always, you know, the, the people who own who own a house, yeah. you know, they don't really own the house. They're, they're paying a mortgage and yeah, all that yeah, kind of yeah. stuff. And a lot of times these mortgages, they're even less money than what someone is paying for rent. Right. You know, it, it's just about maybe putting some money aside for the down payment and then just trusting that you'll figure it out. Yeah. You know, you are the age you are and you figured it out up to this point. Yeah. And I would dare to say that you're having a good time. Sometimes. Sometimes. I'm having a good time. All right. Well, if I, let my, if I, if I really look at it objectively, everything is good. Mm -hmm. All is well. Okay. I have a lot of stress. Things stress me out. Things aren't always the way I want them to be, but all is well. I'm alive. I'm healthy. Mm -hmm. I got, I got friends, you know, I got, I got a place to live. I got this little dog that refuses to die. <laughs> how, how, this is Omar. This is Omar. Yeah. She's how, 15. She's 15. She's half blind, half deaf and almost all the way, all the, all the way blind and deaf at this point. But she still wants to, you know, she's still, she's still trying to hang out. Her back legs don't work, but she's still very much in the mix, you know? How, how are you going to commemorate her passing? I don't know. What are your options? Uh, my options are, I mean, do you, do people have a service for a dog? I don't think I would do that. You should totally. You should have a party. Maybe a party. Maybe an Omar party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe for me. Because it will be, I've, as much as I'm preparing myself for this, you know, I've been preparing myself for her to die for years and being like, it's going to be fine. I'll probably be wrecked. I'll probably have like something in me will be very sad. And I, but the thing is, I think her trick, the trick she will play is I don't think she's going to die for a long time. I think she's going to hang in there and just make me annoyed by being so decrepit. Mm -hmm. And she's, you know, I see her back legs not working. And my worst nightmare is having a dog with wheels for legs. And she might do it to me. Or maybe I, maybe it's like time for her to go. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I preemptively put her down. So I don't have to deal with any of that bullshit. You know, mm -hmm. maybe after this, I'm going to go to, her, I'm going to go to the, the, I'm going to go to the vet, the vet and be like, it's time. And then, what do you mean, sir? I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I've had enough. She shit on the carpet one too many times. Now she's so old, she'll, I take her outside and then she comes right back in and pisses on the carpet in front of me. That's how old she is, mm. which is really, you know, really. She, she's just confused. She's confused. Yeah. That's when I just have to like, you know, stomp her guts out for about a half hour. Nah. It's a, it's, a it's, a, party. it's a wonderful experience and, and patience. Yeah. So sometimes for, I don't have it. Sometimes I'm really frustrated. <laughs> yeah. You know? That the I've been spending time with my father and yeah. he's he's an old man. Yeah. And uh he's he has his moments where he's he's sharp and on point and other points he's not. Yeah. And um I'm learning to be patient with that. Yeah, you gotta be patient, right? Yeah. I listen, I don't think that I it's definitely not something that's inherent in me. I can be patient with certain things, but you know, sometimes there are times when Omar frustrates the shit. Like, you know, today I was trying to get some shit done around the house. I want to get out. I'm like, can you stop following me for a minute? Just chill out. She's like, follow me, follow me, follow me. Cause she's so worried I'm going to leave. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I just, I just was like, Omar, just fucking just take a nap. I, cause it's stressing me out. Cause I'm like, I'm always doing five things and trying to get out of the house before, you know, trying to get my food and boom, get out of the house. Like I got, I'm always doing that. It's mm -hmm. always something. And there's always too much to do and not enough time to do it. And you know, fuck that. You know what I mean? Like I really am. I'm really a, a very close to just saying like, you know, fuck it all. I'm okay. just going to, I'm just going to like, I'm just going to like quit everything. I'm just going to lay on the ground like an oil slick and I'm going to spread out all over the floor of my house and I'm just going to ooze. And I'm just going to ooze out and I'm going to make myself a long, thin pancake and I'm going to lay there and I'm just going to contemplate everything and then I'm just going to sit there and rebirth myself as a really buff moth. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you feel me, Jason? Yeah, I know what you mean. You know what I'm talking about. You, know you just want to break out of the matrix and out of your physical form. Well, maybe your, maybe your relationship with uh, Omar when she passes. Yeah. 
uh, it it kind will kind of be a marker like a like a chapter of your life is closing. Oh yeah, liberating. And and it might be a catalyst for some of these uh, interests that you say you have that you haven't pursued. That's a that's a really good. Uh, all of these events are are catalysts for change and chat. Like I've had a lot of change in the beginning of this year, mm-hmm. major changes, big life changes, such as a death, um, a big move, mm-hmm. getting rid of a lot of stuff and moving, and then shortly after the move, a breakup, mm-hmm. and all those things are very uh, in succession in a row. It's very destabilizing. And it puts you right on the front mm-hmm. line of acute emotion and and present and being you're you're present with every thought and emotion on the front line. You can't bury it anymore. It's all in the it's all in your face. Mm-hmm. And I'm forced to look at everything in my life and go, what am I? What am I just? What's what's really going on here? Mm-hmm. Like what am I? What am I doing? What am I ignoring every day just so I can move forward? Mm-hmm. What things am I not doing right? Like you know, and I, I take stock. When mm-hmm. you when you get your bell rung a little bit, you I, I like to stop and go, okay, what's happening? Let me see what's going on because I, I always I always think there's something fundamentally there's something fundamentally off, you know. Mm-hmm. And we, I think you know. Well, it, it seems like it seems like uh, all these things that might keep you tied into a particular rhythm are being released one by one. Do yeah, you, you, some of it. But some no, the rhythm it? the rhythm's still there. The rhythm is still there. None of okay. that stuff has but, stopped. But there are things that, that are that are shifting. Yeah. And your possibility to do as you please uh is is uh it's not no my my ability to do as I please is no different than it was at all before. It's I put myself in these structures. I I have a you know I have a system in place where I go here, I go here, I go I go here. Like, I built it all. No one's telling me to do it, but it's a self-imposed. You know, it's it's a struggle because also like I got to make money. I got to do things. I got to I got to you know I have passions. Mm-hmm. I got things I want to do. I got creative urges. You know, mm-hmm. and if I could just sit around and like do whatever I wanted and, and turn that into cash, that would be amazing. But I haven't mm-hmm. figured that out yet. I'm getting close sometimes, but not not quite. Well, isn't it fun to try? Come to the Patreon. It's $5 a month. If you can't afford that, then you can't afford to live. 